Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Gay Let's Play Dragon Age Inquisition. In our last episode, we did a bunch of things. Um, at the war table, Solas date raped us. Or, not, not really. So there he is, speak of the devil. Hey, Solas. So, speak well. That was... Actually, yeah, that was incredible, Solas. I'll give you... It, it looked really real. That was incredible. I've... Never done anything like that before. Ooh. Do you regularly talk to people in dreams? No. Consider that one more rule you have effortlessly broken in your rise to power. I had no idea that the anchor would allow you to dream with such focus. It is truly remarkable. But I am reasonably certain we are awake now. And if you wish to discuss anything, I would enjoy talking. I hope this doesn't turn into one big giant inception story. Tell me about your journey, Solus. I'd like to hear more about what you saw in your exploration of the Fade. I would be happy to share it with you. Tell me about the old ruins you explored. I found the ruin of Barandur, a lost Tevinter city buried deep beneath the dead and barren wasteland. Volcanic ash had sealed it tight. In one dark moment, every living creature in the city seared and smothered. They were statues in the ashes. Like a mold made to recall the lost. That's kind of creepy. Tell me about a spirit you encountered. I met a friendly spirit who observed the dreams of village girls as love first blossomed in their adolescence. With subtlety, she steered them all to village boys with gentle hearts, who would return their love with gentle kindness. Aww. The matchmaker, so I called her. That small village never knew its luck. Aww, that's sweet. Tell me about the old memories you found in the Fade. I saw a savage human horde go marching toward the battlefront. They sang a soldier's hymn to keep formation. Primal music shook the ground. These savage, unwashed warriors carried harmonies no chantry choirs mastered. Though their cause was all but hopeless, they sang songs that made the spirits weep. Thanks, Solus. We'll talk later. Goodbye. We'll talk now. Or after I read this. Request for resources on the Fade. Regarding your request, as a noted partner of the Inquisition, Leti Montelier has ensured our contacts are quick to reply. The few titles on hand accompany this letter, with the remaining en route, en route from libraries in Val Royal and surrounding, Archivist Bannon. Fade and Spirits Mysterious by Ferdinand Genetivi, and Enchanter's Observations by Anonymous, the Holy Grace, author unknown. On Silver Cords by First Enchanter Irving. Oh, Ernst Irving! I didn't realize he wrote a book himself. Wisdom Failed, The Hedge Mage, collected by First Enchanter Heron. Translations of the Elilan, Elilan Excavation, collected by Brother Ferdinand Genitibi. To Venture Journeys Inward by Arkin Vice. Our Elysian Heart by formerly, by formerly Sister Laudine. Speaking to the Other, a translation by Lady Chikin. On Lyrium, a Templar's memoir by Sir Treus, Dalish myth and collected truths against, collected by Sister Patrine. Elvahan Dis Falsis, Trio Metad Dracas, untranslated, author unknown. There are no, there are two more pages of titles listed beneath. So these are all books for the library. Ooh, we've got a lot of solid stuff going on. Maybe it's because of the approval. That might be why. I see art as a tea drinker too. Apparently that wasn't very good. Sorry, Solis. There's only so many things that the Inquisition can provide for us, luxuriously. Apparently tea is not one of them. Something wrong with your tea? It is tea. I detest this stuff. Why are you drinking but it? But this morning, I need to shake the dreams from my mind. I may also need a favor. Name it, buddy. You just have to ask. One of my oldest friends has been captured by mages. Forced into slavery. I heard the cry for help as I slept. Well, we're gonna help him. I'd be happy to help. What did these mages use to capture your friend? Blood magic? A summoning circle, I would imagine. I'm sorry? Oh, it's a spirit. My friend is a spirit of wisdom. A wisdom. Unlike the spirits clamoring to enter our world through the rifts, it was dwelling quite happily in the Fade. It was summoned against its will, and wants my help to gain its freedom and return to the Fade. Hmm. Do you have any idea what the mages want with your friend? No. It knows a great deal of lore and history, but a mage could learn that simply by speaking to it in the Fade. So why would it is possible that they seek information it does not wish to give, and intend to torture it. 
I thought spirits wanted to find their way into this world. Some do, certainly. Just as many Orlesian peasants wish they could journey to exotic Ravain. But not everyone wants to go to Ravain. My friend is an explorer, seeking lost wisdom and reflecting it. It would happily discuss philosophy with you, but it had no wish to come here physically. Well, Solas, I'm definitely going to help you. You're, you've been a great friend to me all this time. All right. Let's go get your friend. Thank you. And I got a sense of my friend's location before I awoke. I'll mark it on our map. Thank you, sir. And, I mean, honestly, Art really looks up to Solas. I don't know if Solas is necessarily older than him. I don't think he is. Well, he's an elf, so he might be a little bit older. Well, no, because in this world, I think elves... Yeah, elves no longer have... They don't no longer live as long of a life as they used to. But anyway, regardless of their age difference, I think Art really, um, looks up to Solas. So... Greetings. Tell me about Corypheus. I need to know more about Corypheus. We spoke of this on our travels to Skyhold. What more can I tell you? Cassandra and Varric seem more familiar with their adversary. I respect you, Solas. This is, this is what I just said. You've given me good counsel before. I could use some now. My apologies, Inquisitor. My poor manners shame me. I claim no secret wisdom, but I will guess as best I can. That's better. Tell me about the orb. I would like to know more about the orb he carries. As I said, that must be the means by which he created the breach. I suspect the blast that destroyed the Conclave was more accident than anything. The result of unlocking power that had sought release for ages. What I cannot understand is how he managed to survive such an explosion. You said that you believe the orb is Elven. I never would have believed that a Vinter Mage could unlock such a powerful relic. It clearly enhances his abilities. Giving him access to power he should never have known. Like the power to control the Archdemon. Mm. Indirectly, one assumes. Nothing in any law connects my people to the old god dragons who became Archdemons. So it does seem like that one dragon that he's controlling is one of the old gods who ultimately would become an archdemon if this ended up being a blight, which it kind of seems like it's about to be. What can you tell me about the source of Corypheus's power? According to the law, the ancient magistars of Avinta received guidance from the old gods. Corypheus commands a false archdemon, a corrupted old god. He suggests he no longer sees himself as their minion. Some of his unique power comes from the corruption of the Blight. The rest may come from the orb he carries. So we have to figure out how to destroy the orb. What do you think Corypheus will do next? You shamed him when you destroyed Haven. It spoiled his glorious victory. It would be worse to acknowledge that you had done so. He must continue on his course or show weakness. He will return to his plans to throw Olay into chaos and then conquer it for Devinter. You're sure that's what he'll do? As certain as is possible. Assuming I can plausibly predict a man who seeks to rise to godhood. And can you? The key is understanding this. No real god need prove himself. Anyone who tries is mad or lying. That's a good point. His deception will undo him. As it has done countless fools before. Thank you, Solas. We'll talk later. Goodbye. Okay. This is a room I haven't been to yet. Oh no, this is the room that I, I got I got um, turned around a bit. This is a beautiful mural. Huh. That looks a lot like Lionel Lionel's sword in Thundercats. Ugh. Give me sight beyond sight. Whoa. Wow. All right, I'm, I'm going to go there later because I want to go back to where Dorian was because I was just there. here anymore. Our clothes removed. Helis Helisma. Greetings to you, Inquisitor. 
I am to serve as assistant to any research concerns. Know, You'll find my skills are exceptional. I hope they prove useful. She's, oh, she's one of the Tranquils. You replaced Minave. You're taking over the duties of Minave? Yes. A death provided the vacancy. I am told there are many who will miss her. I miss her too. My skills will ensure that you do not miss her ability. What are your abilities? How can you serve the Inquisition? I am to aid in the research of all creatures encountered in your efforts as leader of the Inquisition. What makes you particularly qualified? I remember being fond of animals. I don't remember why. Mm, fair enough. You were made tranquil? Yes, I am tranquil. It was necessary due to a willful nature that made wielding magic a dangerous endeavor. I remember that being a difficult time, but I cannot remember why. My skills are well used in my current position. What is your evaluation of how we're doing? Adequate. Based on the partial improvements to Skyhold. All right, well, thank you. As you were. Yes, Inquisitor. Minave number two. Minave, as we know. Minave, I'm so sorry I failed you. The folly of General Nat Sheraton. Four. And so it was that victory. It was, and so it was that victory was absolute. And cheers were raised for General Nat Sheraton. And so buoyed by respect and admiration, Nat Sheraton stood proud and removed the mask of state, uh, mask to state her true name. For had they not accepted her? Had they not thrived by her leadership? Had they not become comrades despite station and masks and nonsense of protocol? And the answer was swift and bewildering, for they had not. And swiftly she was bundled away amid calls of imposter and spy, another term she could not know, for she still did not know. Her <laughs> Greetings again, Inquisitor. Carry on. I'll leave you to it. Sorry, Fiona, I was trying to look at this book. The Veil. I detest this notion that the Veil is some manner of invisible curtain that separates the world of the living from the world of the spirits. Whether it be called the Fade or the Beyond is a matter of racial politics I refuse to indulge in at the moment. There is no this side and that side when it comes to the Veil. One cannot think of it as a physical thing, or a barrier, or even a shimmering wall of holy light. Thank you very much for that image, your perfection. Think of the veil instead as opening one's eyes. Before you opened them, you saw our world as you see it now. Static, solid, unchanging. Now that they are open, you see our world as the spirit sees it. Chaotic, ever-changing. A realm where the imagined and the remembered have as much substance as that which is real. More, in fact. A spirit sees everything as defined by will and memory. And this is why they are so very lost when they cross the veil. In our world, imagination has no substance. Objects exist independently of how we remember them or what emotions we associate with them. Mages alone possess the power to change the world with their minds, and perhaps this forms the nature of a demon's attraction to them. Who can say? Regardless, the act of passing through the veil is much more about changing one's perceptions than a physical transition. The veil is an idea. It is the act of transition itself. And it is only the fact that both living beings and spirits find the transition difficult that gives the veil any credence as a physical barrier at all. From a dissertation on the Fade as a physical manifestation by Marino, senior enchanter of the Minrathos Circle of Magi, six feet to five steel. That's interesting. I'm not sure if I buy it completely, but it's an interesting theory. What do we have here? Oh, okay, there's the banners. There's another extra chair here. Construction report, surfacing, paint, plaster, paint, plaster, tile, plaster, stone. Previous occupants have redressed over and over. Most are solid, some I would strip down to the stone. The strength of this place is the foundation. Are we here for the long term, or is this, or is this inquisition temporary? Amso, masonry. Do it right, the inquisition is only temporary if we fail. And we're not failing the, Inquis in the Inquisitor. Sir Morris, Quartermaster. I just love the feeling of everyone behind me, you know? It's just a great feeling as I look look over at my subjects. There's the banner of the free marches. It's actually not hawk symbol, it's watch symbol. Actually, no, that's the Canari symbol, excuse me. Canari banner. No. Um... I'm not going to jump down there. I am going to 
go down this way. Okay. Cool, because this door... Gotcha. Okay, now this door is open, because it wasn't before. It's very cool. Did I miss something? Did I miss someone? Liliana. Liliana's here. I miss Liliana. Where's Liliana? Liliana. Oh, maybe Liliana's over here. Maybe. I have no idea. Stop it, lost. Cullen! Cullen, you're here! What's going on, buddy? Inquisitor, hey. I've found where the Red Templars come from. They're in full redoubt. Right. The knights were fed Red Lyrium until they turned into monsters. Samson took over after their corruption was complete. How do you know Samson? He was a Templar in Kirkwall, until he was expelled from the Order. I knew he was an addict, but this... Red Lyrium is nothing like the Lyrium given by the Chantry. Its power comes with a terrible madness. Of course I believe you, Colin. The Red Templar's swarming haven were proof enough. We cannot allow them to gain strength. The Red Templars still require Lyrium. If we find their source, we can weaken them and their leader. Where do we begin? Caravans of Red Lyrium are being smuggled along trade roads. Investigating them could lead to where it's being mined. If you confront them, be wary. Anything connected to Samson will be well guarded. Okay, Colin. I didn't have any reason for Art to believe that he was looking for revenge, necessarily. I think Art is, has a lot of respect for Colin, and he believes that he's... Everything he does is, is for the right reasons. At least he believes that. Hey, Colin. I, I was already there. I don't know why I'm walking into your door a second time. As leader of the Inquisition, you... There's something I must tell you. You can tell me anything, buddy. Come on. Whatever it is, I'm willing to listen. We're friends. Right. Thank you. Lyrium grants Templars our abilities, but it controls us as well. Those cut off suffer. Some go mad, others die. We have secured a reliable source of Lyrium for the Templars here. But I no longer take it. Oh no, come You stopped come when on. I joined the Inquisition. It's been months now. Colin? Why didn't I know sooner? You seem fine, but why? Why didn't I know sooner? But you could die. Colin, if this can kill you... It hasn't yet. Oh, After no. what happened in Kirkwall, I couldn't. I will not be bound to the Order or that life any longer. Whatever the suffering, I accept it. Oh my gosh, but I would not on. put the Inquisition at risk. I've asked Cassandra to watch me. If my ability to lead is compromised, I will be relieved from duty. Colin, oh. this is tough because, yeah, Lyrium is a horrible addiction that Templars go through, and if they stop taking it, they essentially go through withdrawal, and it can drive them mad. Ah, uh, jeez. Of course, overdosing on Larian could drive you mad as well. I'm just, I'm so worried about Colin. Are you in pain? I can endure it. I mean, Art understands why Colin is doing it, and he actually thinks it's a very noble decision. Um, and he's not going to tell him that he doesn't approve. Because Colin's doing it for the right reasons. Fine, just do your job. I'll trust Cassandra. He's going to respect Colin's decision, but you know what? Because now that you've told me, I'm actually... Art's really glad that, that Colin confided him on this, because it really shows how much their, their relationship is growing as a friend, how much their friendship is growing, that Colin is able to 
tell Art this, because it's... I can't imagine it's very easy for him to share something like that. Because um, he has to, as one of the advisors, he has to remain strong, and he has to give this... He can't show weakness, and um, or vulnerability. And the fact that Colin is sharing his vulnerability with Art, I think really touches Art a lot. Um, so of course he's going to trust Cassandra, but now that Art knows about it too, um, Cassandra's not going to be the only one who's going to keep an eye on him and take care of him. Art's going to take care of him too. Thank you for telling me. I respect what you're doing. Thank you, Inquisitor. The Inquisition's army must always take priority. Should anything happen, I will defer to Cassandra's judgment. I'll keep an eye on you, Colin. I'm not gonna let you. I will not let you die. Inquisitor? Tell me more about Samson, Colin. You and the Red Templar's leader seem to have personal history. When I arrived in Kirkwall, Samson and I shared quarters. He seemed a decent man at first. Knight Commander Meredith later expelled Samson for erratic behavior. He ended up begging on Kirkwall streets. He committed further crimes, but managed to evade the Order's justice. Now Samson serves Corypheus as his loyal general. Why do you think Samson joined Corypheus? He had a chronic lyrium addiction. Mm. He spent every last coin buying it from local smugglers. Perhaps Corypheus flattered his vanity, gave him purpose as well as lyrium. Perhaps that's all it took. It sounds like Samson had a miserable life. The Order expelled him, but he had choices. He could have found another path. I don't understand how he became so powerful. Even with Red Lyrium, Samson's glory days are long behind him. Hmm. Inquisitor? What do you think of the people you work with? Who do you mean? I should let you get back to work. Was there something you needed? Is there anything I should know? I'd gotten used to mages disliking me on principle. <laughs> Vivienne's views on Templars are surprisingly traditional. Is there anything I should know? Sarah brought me a piece of cake. She thought I looked hungry. Aww. Why are you telling me this? <laughs> because it was either an act of kindness or a trap. I was hoping you knew which. <laughs> yeah, I kind of feel like it was a trap. <laughs> Maybe you should... I don't know if I would randomly accept a cake from Sarah. Is there anything I should know? I believe Dagna has settled in well. She's certainly very cheerful. And I love her for Is that. Is that a bad thing? Bless her heart. I'm concerned she'll cheerfully blow up Skyhold with one of her experiments. The risk is small at present. I, I trust her, though. Is there anything I should know? Not at present. All right, that's all. That's all for now. I'm sure you have other matters to attend. Yes, like looking for my spy master. Where is Leliana? Wow. There can definitely be a battle here too, but I don't want a battle here right this moment. This place is huge! I don't even know how in the world... Yeah, that's not safe at all. This is not... Oh, okay. So does that mean this connects? All right, well... Yeah. Oh, jeez. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Ooh, okay. I made it. Is there no other way? Oh, there's a lizard. is isn't even a way out here. All right. Well... That's a long way down. Come on, Kari. Come on. Oh my goodness. I mean, I could just go over to the main areas. But yeah, there we go. But I'm very stubborn. There's the Inquisition flags. Very nice. Oh, there's a ladder there? Strange thing. When I reached down, my dagger was gone. Just gone. Know where I found it? In a barrel. 
The thing was filled to the brim with daggers. Got the strangest feeling. I know someone took it right off my belt, but I can't recall who. Cool. That was cool. I wonder why he did that. Well, I'm not gonna ask too many questions. <laughs> Would be nice if I can ask him. Oh, this is where Colin sleeps. Well. I have a feeling if you are romancing Colin that this area might be a little more use. Hmm? Maybe? Of course, we also have our own quarters too. Oh, jeez. Wow. This is massive. I still can't go over. I, 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 I'm getting dizzy just looking, just watching, looking at all these things. Hard in Hightown Chapter 5. We haven't even, even done Chapter... I haven't even gone to 3 and 4 yet. By Varric Tethris. Jevlon was waiting outside the captain's office when Don and Berenkovic slunk out, defeated. We're not getting a warrant, are we? Jevlon looked almost relieved. No. Don and met his parents' eyes. His partner's eyes. The kid was barely 20 and looked like he'd walked straight to the Kirkwald barracks from somebody's potato farm. Taller and broader than the other guards, Jevlin slouched as if he didn't know how to fit into his own limbs, as if he thought he should be smaller. Hunched over in his brand new, too large armor, he looked like a child playing at a, being a guard. He was too green for a murder investigation. Maybe it's just for the, it's for the best, Jevlin said, almost speaking Donnan's thought out loud. You're on your way out of the guard and I'm... He trailed off and sighed. Questioning nobles in the middle of the night, the night wasn't covered in training. Don and glared at the kid. I'm a city guard and so are you, recruit. Nobody gets away with murder while we're on duty. Jevlin stood a little straighter. What do we do then? The captain wants proof, Don smiled. We bring her proof. Even if you have to make it up? I don't know, that's what I'm thinking. Majestic. How is a place like this ever lost? That's a very good question. Wow. There's just so many rooms. Somebody's in here, though. Who is in here? Cole. Cole, what are you doing in here? I don't know. Cole's doing. What is Cole? Someone left sliced plums on the windowsill again. The juice is attracting flies. There are spiders everywhere. The plums were right in front of me, but. I can't quite recall who took them. <laughs> it's... it's cool. Sarah's cabinet of wonder, whose it was. It's delivered. One cabinet suitable for a lady's curiosities, if resources should be spent on such things. Sir Morris. Below, a comment and journal entries by Sarah. Also, doodles of Sarah with her tongue out. Eat it, Morris. Stuff needs a place. Stuff. Banner. Circle. Soft. Lizard. Scratched out. Rough and weird. Holla. Fake. Real one stink. Cards, Little Worlds, Goblet, Fancy Cup, Cup, Stuff Goblet, Bottle, Warded, Strong, Bottle, Tvinter, Weak, Stupid Sword, There's a Small Bloodstain, Silk, Bolts, Not Arrow Bolts, Soft, Make Something, I think that Minstrel Meriden is chatting me up, the song is creepy. Nice. Here first. I'll look for Cole. Oh. I'll, I'll do that. I think I'm running out of time, so I'll do that in the next video. Oh my gosh. Alright, well, never mind. I think I'm going to be doing the next video very soon then. Did you hear the news? What's the news? Alright, everybody, I think I'm going to end it here. Thank you again for watching this episode of Gay Let's Play Dragon Age Inquisition. Tune in next time, everybody, and until then, love yourselves and love each other.